Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to make a horse from modelling chocolate. Um, you can use modelling paste if you want to, but I, pref I prefer to work with modelling chocolate on this, it just gives it more time to work with. So I've covered my hands in um, corn flour, uh, just so that the chocolate's not going to stick to my hands, and we're going to uh, push out the rough shape of the horse, so you can see I've got the body and I've got the neck and I've got the head. Now I've taken some modelling chocolate and I've wrapped it in cling film and that's what I'm rubbing over the um, horse's shape. It's just going to take my fingerprints out of the piece um, and leave it nice and smooth. Now once you've got your rough shape, and it does only have to be a rough shape, I'm going to put it on a polystyrene dummy and we're going to put a kebab skewer through the neck. This is just going to help keep the neck up um, and push it to where I need it to be. Um, and I'm going to use a little tub just to put underneath the nose to stop the the nose and the chin bit from falling right down. So you can see I'm using that modelling chocolate in the cling film just to rub out any um, fingerprints um, and push that in a little bit just to create the socket for the leg. So the modelling chocolate can uh, go a bit shiny when you're working with it. But it's just because it's getting really warm and um, the fat that's inside the chocolate is coming to the surface so that's what gives it that look. It does set really quickly so as soon as you stop playing with it it doesn't take long to harden. If I was going to make this out of modelling paste then I would have left it to dry um, overnight before adding some of the details but because it's modelling chocolate you can just um, leave it for a little bit and it just will firm up on its own. So you can see I'm squeezing the top of the back there because you need to have a little bit of a spine area and I'm just going over where I'm working with the um, the modelling chocolate just wrapped in the cling film. You can see I'm smoothing out those areas and I'm just pushing in uh, sockets for the legs at the back and the front and I'm just pushing the head to the position that we want it so you can see I've got the horse looking as if it's slightly on the side. Now you will need to work underneath the chin and the neck also so you can move your little um, tub that you've got underneath the chin and smooth out with the, um, the cling film and the modelling chocolate as well. So I'm just going to define some of the mouth so you can see I'm just pushing it in slightly and then we're going to put some um, work in on the neck. So creating the jawline just with one of your tools. Now I'm using a, a soft tip Serrat tool but you could use a Dresden tool which would work just as well. So once you've marked in the area for the side of the jaw we're going to leave that one to dry. See I'm just smoothing out some other areas. I'm just rolling that little bit underneath the neck to make sure it's nice and straight. And you can see I'm just rubbing it out again, supporting the head because it is still quite floppy. The um, My kitchen's been so hot with the weather that we've been having. I'm going to create the line in between the chest there. So you can see I'm just smoothing that out with my tool and one at the other side and then smoothing out the middle. You can see I'm just flattening it off a little bit as well. Now this was my first time making the horse. Um, I did actually need it to be white so I did end up painting it but if you wanted it to be white you could add white powder to the modelling chocolate before you start working with it. So we're going to create the nostrils so you want to push in slightly and then lift out to the side and you can see I'm just using my finger at the top of the nostril just to go around where the brush is and that's going to give you that defined area for the nose. So once you've got the nose area in, if you pinch in just at the top of there, just to bring it in slightly. And then we're going to put in the mouth. So I have um, a stitching tool and I'm using the sharper end of the stitching tool. And I'm just going to create a line that defines the bottom lip from the sort of top of the mouth 
and then coming around the side. So start in the middle and it needs to be quite low at the bottom so you can see that I'm just marking it around and I'm going to follow that around to the other side of the face. Be careful to try and get it as straight as what you possibly can and then support the head again just to let it dry. Just going to do the other side of the face. So I chose to do a white horse because the, um, the person whose cake it was ha actually had a white horse. If you wanted to do it with brown, you could use brown modelling chocolate or brown modelling paste. So now we're going to work on the legs. Again, just using a bit of corn dust to put on your hands to stop it from sticking. So if you roll a sausage shape, and then we're going to flatten one side and pinch in, because uh, horses, if you look at their feet after the, the hoof, it usually comes in a little bit. So you're just going to create a rough shape like that. And then we're going to roll the rest of the leg out to match. And then we're going to push this into the shape that we want. Now this horse is lying down. I have actually got a picture at the side of me of a horse laying down. So I can kind of see how the legs look once they're in that position. So we're going to start with working with the back leg. And it's the first leg that you can't really see. We're going to do that one first. So we're going to bend the hoof. And just make sure that it's flat underneath. And then we're going to bend again. And that's going to give the ankle, knee. I don't really know what, the, what that part's called on a horse. But it's going to give you the second bend there. And you're going to trim off any excess. And we're going to see how that fits size-wise against the body that we've got. So you're just going to put in a little line at the bottom of the hoof. And then measure that against the size of the body that we've got. You can put increased marks for where it's bent just with the back of a stitching tool. And we're going to put in some lines on the leg because that's going to be where the bone almost sticks out. So we want it to be quite close to the body so we can trim off any excess. Now the good thing about modelling chocolate is you can just push it on and then you can hide that join just by blending it in. So again with the modelling chocolate in the cling film and just pushing that into place. You don't need to use any water with modelling chocolate whatsoever and it does set really really firm. So I'm moving that leg back a little bit and just tucking it in. And then we're going to do the same with the other leg. So again going to create the flat edge and then we're going to taper it in at the ankle and then we're going to roll it out so that it gradually gets thicker at one side. Now with this one, this is going to be the leg that's laying on top of the leg we've just done. We're going to use the same method we did before for bending it but you need a bigger bulge at the top of um, this leg because that's going to create the I don't know, the thigh area at the top that's stuck to the body. And when you're doing this and you're putting it on, you're kind of pushing it into place so the edges become a little bit thinner and the bulk of that fatty bit is in the middle. So again, you can mark on the hoof and mark on the lines for... Um, the bones, if you ever look at like a horse's leg, it's quite tight over the leg. And you can usually see the bones and there's like a dip. So you can push it in with your fingers just like I'm doing. And that creates that extra piece there for the leg. And then using that just to smooth over the joint. Now the joint doesn't need to completely go. Because if you look at a horse, when it is laid down, there is that area that seems kind of separate from the rest of the body. But you do want to smooth in the join. 
you can see I'm just going over it there just to give it a little bit more definition and then just using my finger to smooth. So once you're happy with the position of the back legs, we're going to go on to work on the front legs. So just like the other side, we're going to create the hoof and flatten off the side. And then these ones you kind of want to fold back upon themselves. Now we're going to do the hoof that, sorry, the leg that's at the front of the body first. And again, it needs to be a little bit more meatier at the top of the leg than it does at the bottom. And you're going to mark in the areas where it folds and the, the ankle joint. So you can see that's the kind of shape that we're going for. We're pushing in the hoof area. And then trim off any excess. You're going to bend it up slightly again. And so their joins, when they're bent, are quite sharp. So you always want to make sure that you make it quite squarish. And then we're going to stick this on the front. So just like the back leg, you need to have that bit of definition for the joints. It's a little bit fattier at the top. We're just going to push that in place and then smooth over the edges. So I've got a Dresden tool there that I was using just to push up. Now the body of the horse is drier now and firmer. So that makes it easier for the blend. And don't worry about when you're working with the modeling chocolate if what you've just added looks darker than the rest of the body because that will happen because the rest of the body is slightly drier, is slightly firmer. Once it all dries together, it will be the same color. Now, like I mentioned earlier with this one, I made the horse and then realized that the modeling chocolate's kind of a bit of a yellowy white. It's not pure white, which is what the horse was um, that I got sent the picture of. So I ended up having to paint this with um, sugar flare white. I think it's a, uh, extreme white or super white powder. I will put the link in the description box below. And I just painted that on with a mixture of that and some vodka. It did take quite a few layers. Um, but if I were to do this horse again, I would colour the fondant, the modelling chocolate first to just add something like super white into the chocolate and mix it all together and it would make it go white. Again, if you was doing it brown, you could just use brown modelling chocolate and then paint in the detail later. So you can see I'm just adding creases into the um, joints on the horse. And then we're going to do... A similar kind of leg as the ones before for the one at the front from the other side. So just again smoothing over everything and making sure that join looks as natural as possible. The good thing about modeling chocolate is if you've made an error or you know if you don't like anything later on you can sort of put your hands on it to warm it up, to rework on it, to amend what you've done. So for the next leg again, we're going to do the same sort of uh, thing. We're going to bend it and we're going to define the hoof and square off the knee. So the majority of this leg is hidden. Uh, because the horse is laid on it. So we're going to chop the hoof off. And then we're just going to push that into place and blend that joint in that's where it's joined on. You don't have to do that so much with this leg because I said, again, it is hidden. So there is, you don't really have to work on that joint as much as what you have done with the front legs. So you can see I'm just pushing it into place with the Dresden tool and smoothing it off with my modelling chocolate wrapped in cling film. And again just marking in those shallows in the legs. Those are going to be shaded later on. 
So now we're going to do the eyes. So I'm going to show you how to do one side of the face really and then you can just match the other. So just a small hole for the eye socket and we're going to put some black uh, modelling paste in there and just flatten that off slightly. So now we're going to do the eye socket for the eye. So you want to roll out a thin sausage shape and we're going to start with the top bit first. So push it into place with your Dresden tool and then we're going to smooth out that join. So you can see I'm pushing it out to the side and at this point the head is quite firm. So it's easier to push that the excess chocolate off and blend that line in. And you want to be careful that when you're doing this, the part of the top um, is not falling down over the, the black bit for the eye. So you can, you know, you can see I'm pushing it up and then I'm taking off the excess. And every time it comes down, I'm just pushing it up again. And once you've done that bit, we're going to do exactly the same for the bottom bit. So we're going to roll another small sausage shape and you're just going to place that on underneath. And then again, using the same technique that we already have done, you're going to pull that join down slightly so that it blends in. Again, making sure that it's not going to cover that um, the pupil that we've got. So we did the circle and we added the circle bit of black in the middle for the eye. And then when we're doing this, it's changing the shape of the eye now. So it's not a circle. It's sort of like a, almost like an almond shape. You know, it's flat in the middle and it comes to a point at either side. And once you've done one side, you can then pop over and do the other eye in exactly the same place. So now... We're going to take some more modelling paste and just roll sort of like a, a teardrop shape and use your Dresden tool to um, create the fold in the ear. So you can see I've pinched the bottom and we're just going to take out this kebab skewer. So I think I tried to cut it and it wasn't coming out so I twisted it and it just actually popped out of the... Um, the body. I really need to get some sharper scissors to be able to cut. But you can see that I'm just twisting it at the same time and it just came out of the head. So whenever you've got something like that in, if you twist it, you cause less damage to the body. Take off that nib at the top and then we're going to put the ear in place. So picking up the ear and pushing it into place and then I'm just going to smooth out where the ear joins the head. So I'm just going to push that bit in and then just re-go over the point. So you're going to do the eye and the ear the same for the other side. I'm putting a cocktail stick in just so it supports that neck a little bit as well because as I'm working with it again it's getting hot from the heat from my hands. So now we're going to work on the hair. So I'm just going to take a rough blob of uh, modelling chocolate and I've got some scissors and I'm just going to cut some lines in there and this is going to create the fringe for the um, the front of the horse's hair. So you can see it's just rough a shape that I'm cutting. I'm going to pinch it together and then we're going to trim off the excess and then I'm just going to place that on the top between the ears and push that into place. So once it's pushed into place you've blended it in. You're then going to take, um, I think it's called a scribe a needle again I will put a link um, in the description box for everything that I've used but then you're just going to where you've blended it in you're just going to recreate that hairline again at the top so you can see where I've blended it out I'm just joining that back in again just to give it a bit more of a natural look and more texture as well 
So now we're going to do the main. So again, roll out a, um, a sausage shape and flatten it more at one side than the other. And then we'll just take some scissors and we're just going to cut, uh, cut in on an angle. And this is going to create the main. So it doesn't have to be too neat because obviously it is hair and we are going to go over it again anyway. And then you're going to place that just hiding it behind the um, ear at the top. And you're just going to push that into place. Obviously hiding the hull from where we've had the support in there. And then you're going to, just like before, take the scriber needle and you're going to create the hairline towards the fattier part of the hair that's stuck on for the mane. And you can fiddle about pushing the hairs um, that lay on the horse's neck into position. So you can see I'm just blending in that one side. You can go down the route of adding individual hair strands if you felt it was needed in some places. So again, you would just roll um, a rough sausage shape, flatten it out, and then mark it with your scriber tool just to give um, the hair strands. And then you can just push it into place. It's always useful to do that to top up any areas that look a bit... Um, you know, they don't have as much hair as what the other areas have. And you can use it to define the fringe a little bit more if you wanted more hair in the fringe area. And then we're going to do the tail. So again, a sausage shape that's thinner at one side than the other. We're going to do the scriber tool just to um, create the illusion of hair. Just pushing it out at the bottom. So your sausage shape will go quite flat when you're doing this. But all we're going to do is once we've pushed in all the hair is we're going to fold it over uh, to make it back into a round shape again. And then just re-going over any areas that you've um, pushed out of place. And then we're going to stick this on and it's up to you how you place this. I kind of placed it close to the body and just put a slight twist on it just to make it look a little bit more like it's got a bit of movement in it. So once you've pushed that in place, um, if you're happy with the horse this colour, you can leave it. I chose to paint mine. Um, unfortunately, I forgot to record the, um, the actual part of me painting it. It's sugar flare, super white, mixed with vodka using a rough brush um, and just pushing it into the areas that you need to. I did about two two to three coats. Uh, the first coat was quite streaky and then I topped it up. So once you've got the colour of the horse and you're happy with that, we're going to go in and paint the eye. So you're just going to go over it and paint that black. Once you've painted it, it makes it look a bit shiny also. And then we're going to use black sugar flare and a little bit of the white um, super white and vodka uh, and water and we're just going to make a bit of a grey colour and we're going to colour in all the creases that are in the body so you can make them as dark or as light as you want but you're going to do the ears you're going to do the creases in the legs you're going to do the joints that are in the body you're going to go through the hair and do some of the hair, again doing the mouth and the nose. So I did speed this up quite quickly because um, the video was getting quite long and it's not something that you needed to see uh, happening quite slowly. So you can see I'm just doing a rough outline and then I've got some water and I'm going over the darker joints and this is going to blend it into the white that's already there. And it's going to stop it from looking so harsh like it was actually painted on but give it a more natural feel. So you're going to work around the tail as well. Just adding little bits here and there. 
So you can see I'm just going around the legs and the tail, doing the inside of the ear because that's quite dark. You'd be amazed how much the shading actually does change uh, what the horse looks like. So again, just um, doing the jaw line, the lip line, and then I'm using quite a fine brush at the moment to go over everything and to paint into those creases. But later I will change to a, a thicker brush. You're going to shade around the eye area as well. And don't worry about any areas that you think it's too dark or you've put too much on because you just literally add a little bit of water, put a little bit more white on and it'll just blend in that area really nicely. So you can see I'm just painting inside the nostrils and doing around the mouth again. So inside the nostrils wants to be quite dark, but then and the area around the mouth is quite dark, but then you want to blend that area in so it's not just a dark line, it's a fade, which is what we'll use the bigger brush for in a bit. So you can see I'm just going over that area with a bit of a lighter colour where the join is. And just painting again around the eye. So you can see I've switched to a bigger brush now and instead of painting I'm dabbing the area and switching back again to the smaller brush just to go in to add a little bit of darkness. And you can keep working this until you're happy with um, the shading that you've done. If the horse was brown then I would be tempted to use a mix of brown powder with white uh, brown powder with black powder so obviously in some areas you can apply the black um, and in other areas use the dark brown and that would give a really really nice blend if this horse was a white horse and it had you know you can get some horses that have I almost want to say freckles but they have like a, a pattern across the body where there's like dark splodges then what I would do is I would paint those dark splodges splodges on with a brush in circles almost and then I would go over with a thicker brush that allowed me to dab and put a little bit of white on the brush and then dab and it would give a really really natural and uh, good effect across the the horse's body but mine was actually based on a picture that the customer provided for uh, for the horse so I'm painting the hooves uh, quite a dark colour because hooves are never white so we're just going to shade that in a little bit and just going around the areas where there's like clumps of hair so the join for the tail and uh, in between some of their hair lines so you notice I've, stu I've uh, started with the bigger brush again and I'm just dabbing this in all into place now and you can just add water to it if you wanted uh, just to re-go over those areas and take away some of the harshness so I do hope you liked today's tutorial you can see the cake that I ended up making with um, using this technique if you did like the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up or comment below and if you'd like to see any of my other videos, please click the links on the screen now. Thank you.